Hey everyone, my name is Miranda, and I'm so glad you're here at GeForce. Here at GeForce, there is one thing that we do our best to practice every day, and that is laugh. Now, I myself love to laugh while playing video games, <laughs> while meeting new friends, and laughing at my friends' <laughs> jokes. But that's not quite the laugh I'm talking about. The laugh I'm talking about is spelled L-A-F. L stands for love. We want to show love to everyone around us. A stands for accept. God made everyone unique and special and we want to accept everyone the way that they are. F stands for forgive. No one's perfect. We all make mistakes. So it's important we learn to forgive each other. Now, while we love to laugh, there's something else that we love to do here at GeForce, and that is memorizing God's Word. Doing that helps us to learn what He has planned for our lives, and we can become the amazing people that He has made each and every one of us to be. So that means it's time for our Bible Challenge! Hey everyone, this summer, we'll be finding out how we can make waves. Now, I'm not talking about splashing around in the water or doing a cannonball into the pool, although those are fun to do at this time of the year. I mean, it's so hot. We can make waves in the way that we live each and every single day. You see, what you do today can change the world around you. When we have a relationship with Jesus, we have God's Holy Spirit living inside of us. And Holy Spirit helps us live a life full of things like love, joy, peace, kindness, and all of those fruits of the Spirit. When we live that way, we can change the world for the better. This month, our verse helps us understand how with Holy Spirit, we can make ways. It comes from Galatians 5, verse 23a, and it says, but the Spirit gives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you can memorize this month's Bible challenge, be sure to say it to your parents and have them record a video. Then get your parents to email that video to us here at kids at springchurch.com. And this will let us know that you've completed your July Bible challenge. You'll be entered to win a $25 Toys R Us gift card when you do that. Now it's time to stand up and get ready for one of my favorite parts of service. Praise and worship. Let's do it. Raise the game. Come on, raise the game. Are you ready? He gives us everything we could ever need To love the world around us, to be a light in darkness He's with us every breath, He's with us every step So we can leave fear in the dust behind us If you want to raise the game, He will give you strength To reach another level in Okay. 
making it loud. We're not afraid. We are moving up, moving up. We are making it, making it loud. We're making it loud. Let's raise the game. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, Chapter 5, verses 17 through 42. When Jesus was crucified, people thought it was an end to everything he had started. After all, who would follow a dead man? But within days, the lives of Jesus' friends were turned right side up. By the power of God, Jesus rose from the dead. He appeared to more than 500 people over 40 days before returning to heaven to be with God. But he didn't leave them alone. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and from one end of the earth to the other. On the day of Pentecost, the power of God's Spirit filled the brand new believers with great boldness and joy. All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Their joy was contagious. Please. I want to be baptized. That very day, 3,000 people chose to follow Jesus. The religious leaders were shocked. But this Jesus is dead. They're kind of saying he came back. Inconceivable. The new believers didn't just talk about following Jesus. They did it. They shared their lives, their food, their homes. They praised and prayed to God together. The Spirit of God was so strong in Peter and the other apostles that they made the sick well. Inconceivable! It's a trick! Arrest them at once! The religious leaders threw Peter and John in prison overnight and ordered them to stop talking about Jesus. But still, the joy of the Lord overflowed in the lives of the new believers. The love they showed each other was contagious. More and more people began to follow Jesus. The religious leaders panicked. More than 5,000 Jesus people now. Inconceivable! I do not think that means what you think it means. Arrest all the ringleaders, every single one. This time the high priest made sure all the apostles were thrown into jail. Oh, look, window cell this time. And we got the rodent upgrade. Will they put us on trial? Let's talk to God about it. In the middle of the night, an angel of the Lord appeared in the prison. Oh, I'm awake. Am I, am I awake? The shining figure opened the door to their cell. Hey, John, everyone, are you seeing this? Tall, bright, otherwise indescribable. Yeah. Quickly, the apostles followed the angel out of the prison into the shadowy streets. Go, stand in the temple courtyard. Tell the people all about this new life. Yes, we're on it. Early the next morning, the apostles went back to the temple and began to share about Jesus again. But the religious leaders hadn't gotten the memo yet and sent guards to bring the prisoners from jail. The guards returned alone. Explain yourselves! Uh, the doors were locked and the guards were on duty, but... But what? The prisoners are gone. Gone? Inconceivable! Hey, those guys you put in prison, they're standing in the temple courtyard. Inconceivable! I'm retiring that word. Bring them here! The apostles were brought to stand before the religious leaders. We gave you clear orders not to teach in Jesus' name. But you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings. You want to make us 
guilty of this man's death. We must obey God instead of people. The God of our people raised Jesus from the dead. Now Jesus is Prince and Savior. We're telling people about these things, and so is the Holy Spirit. In good... Preposterous! Let me think. A leader named Gamaliel stood up and ordered the guards. Take these men out of the room. When they had left, Gamaliel addressed his fellow leaders. Think carefully about what you plan to do. This has happened before. Someone rises up, gathers followers. When they die, those followers scatter. Thanks for the history lesson. Your point? Leave these Jesus followers alone. If their plans and actions come from people, they will fail. But if their plans come from God, you won't be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Oh, well, conceivable. The religious leaders called the apostles in. Don't speak in Jesus' name. Like, seriously, don't do it. Is that all? Yeah, whip them and see if that helps it stick. The disciples were whipped, a horrible punishment, and then released. This isn't stopping us. No way. Look at all these people who don't know about Jesus yet. Hey, have you heard the amazing news? In spite of their punishment, the apostles were filled with joy. They continued to share the story of Jesus everywhere, and more and more people believed. I think it's amazing how the apostles found a way to choose joy in the middle of some really difficult stuff. I mean, they were thrown in prison just for telling people about Jesus. I wonder if I could have been as joyful as they were in that situation. In some ways, I'm not so sure. But then again, the apostles had a lot to be joyful about. They knew that Jesus had died on the cross because he had come to be their savior. They had God's spirit filling their hearts with love and courage. Their joy came from one thing, their relationship with God. Joy was the evidence of what God's Spirit was doing in their lives. So you know what? I can be joyful in a tough situation. As long as I have God's Spirit to help me, I can choose joy no matter what is going on. Now, I know it's a lot easier to say than it is to do. There are some things that happen in life that may want to steal our joy. Let's say this. Maybe you're like this plastic bag. Now, this plastic bag, there's some things that go on and start to try and attack it, right? Now, you might not feel very joyful, and so when things come against you, you have a hard homework assignment. You can see it's starting to leak. Or maybe you need to do the right thing to make something right with a sibling or a friend. Or maybe something goes wrong at home and you're not sure what to do about it. All these things can start to attack us and can start to poke holes and start to take away our joy. But you know what, joy isn't a feeling. Happiness is a feeling, and happiness depends on what goes on around us. But when we choose joy, that is different. Now remember, your joy doesn't come from things going really well all around you. It, if we do that, we depend kind of like this bag where we just start to leak out after a while. But I want to show you what joy really looks like in this other bag. You see, this is another bag, very similar, but here's the thing. This one represents us when we have God's love in us, when we know just how much God loves us and cares about us. And when we have a tough homework assignment, it doesn't matter, we can do it because we know that we have the mind of Christ. Or when we have a hard conversation with a friend, we know that God will give us the right words. And it looks like this. Huh. Do you see that? Nothing is leaking out. Let's try that again, okay. Huh. Look it, there's nothing coming out. See that? We're gonna do one more right here. Oh, look at that. You know what? When something is going on at home, we know that God gives us peace. No matter what is going on in our lives, He gives us peace that surpasses all understanding, the Bible says. And you can find joy when you choose to trust God no matter what, and you know what He says about you. And believe it or not, we can change the world by choosing joy. 
because people notice when we have joy in the middle of a situation where we wouldn't be expected to be joyful or happy. They'll want to know where our joy comes from. And I think that's a pretty cool way that we can make waves in the world around us. So let's remember this. Choose joy no matter what is going on. Why don't we pray and talk to God about that right now? Close your eyes with me. God, thank you for giving us Holy Spirit. Thank you that we can choose joy no matter what goes on around us. I pray over everyone that's listening to this right now, whatever they're facing, I thank you that you give us your joy and that we don't have to worry about losing it because of something going on around us, but that we know that you love us and you care about us. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you're listening today and you're wondering who this God person we've been talking about all day is. And if that's you, I want to tell you that God loves you so much. God loves you so much that he wanted to have a relationship with you, but there was a problem. There was something called sin in the world. And you see, this sin, it separated us from having a relationship with God. But God had a plan. He sent his only son, Jesus, here to the world. And when Jesus came, Jesus had to die. But the best part is that Jesus came back to life. And when Jesus did that, he took that sin that separated us from that relationship with God and he got rid of it. He made sure there was none of it left for us. Ooh. Ooh. See, that was so cool. Jesus got rid of all of our sin and he made sure there was nothing left. Just like that fire burned up 
all of that sin and it was gone, Jesus did that for you and he wipes you clean so that you could have a relationship with God. If you want to start that relationship with God, you can do it in three easy steps. A, B, C, A, admit. Admit that you've made mistakes and that you want to be forgiven. B, believe that Jesus is God's son and that he died to forgive you of all of your mistakes. And C, choose. Choose to live a life for God. Now, we're gonna do all of those steps in one really easy prayer. So if you wanna do that, just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I believe in you. Please forgive me. Help me to grow every day and be more like you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome. If you just made that decision for the first time, I wish I could give you a high five or a hug. Go tell one of the adults in your life. And after you told them about this amazing decision you've made, if you don't have a Bible, ask them to email us here at Springs Kids or ask them to reach out to us on social media because we would love to get a Bible into your hands. Well, we've had so much fun hanging out with you guys today. Hope to see you guys back here next week.